Oh well, this is a, uh, a bit of a reflective piece, um, spurred on by the fact that I finally cracked it for 300 subscribers, which is not going to make headlines anywhere on, um, on YouTube, of course, because uh, some of the sites that I actually uh, visit have got well in excess of a million subscribers, um, so uh, it's all relative, I guess, and I guess I'll take that as a victory, and it, uh, even though I haven't got a large number of people following me, I've got some people that, have, um, that I know of uh, who regularly comment, and that's nice, nice to, to at least some people are, have some interest in uh, what's happening in my life. Um, and my uh, views on life and um, yeah I've got a few things uh, to say about um, about the state of the country for instance um, yeah I'm not not overly happy with the way things are going in Australia in on a number of fronts um, I'm more optimistic about uh, what's happening in places like Europe to be quite frank um, in in Europe right now there's a um, uh, there's been a backlash against the open borders that have been uh, a consequence of the uh, European Union's policy uh, pushed to a large extent by uh, Angela Merkel. She seems to be the main instigator and she's in trouble herself in um, with an allied party in Bavaria um, and putting her in a very shaky position and she might be uh, out for the uh, out on the road, as it were, um, very soon. The same with Theresa May, who's uh, uh, also related to the EU, and that's about the fact that she's uh, looks like she's basically backpedalling on Brexit big time, and uh, it's not going down well with the electorate. There's a lot of support now bleeding away from the Conservatives into UKIP, which is uh, United Kingdom Independent Party, which was in a bad state after an initial surge. Uh, but is now regaining popularity as a consequence of the ineptitude of Theresa May and the Conservatives in general. So things in Europe actually um, are going you know, reasonably okay. There's a number of governments there that are, that are, are actually reasserting their nationalist uh, credentials and saying no to uh, unbridled immigration. Uh, Hungary, Austria, uh, even Italy has, has gone that way, which I didn't expect. That was one out of the blue. And um, so I think, you know, the move is definitely on. But in Australia, we seem to be basically still in this quagmire of political correctness. Our universities, are, uh, if anything, going further backwards and trying to prescribe the, the, what, the speech that can be used and uh, pushing the classic uh, left-wing agendas uh, and the one that really disturbs me of course is the one of, uh, of diversity over merit now that has got that is going to end in tears I assure you if, if companies or universities uh, start hiring on the basis of diversity over merit they are going to be uncompetitive to against someone who purely employs on merit alone. And what is wrong with merit? The, the Chinese worked that one out years ago when they had their public service examinations. Hundreds of years ago, they decided to make their public service a totally merit-based system based on an exam. Uh, quite a grueling exam, apparently, too. I, I don't think the students these days would have to want to go through what they did. I think, I think the exams might have gone for a week and you were basically in an isolated room and it just that, that, that it, it was pretty grueling anyway uh, but it was merit-based <coughs> and it's the only way to create a um, an efficient uh, administration or, or bottom line with the company is to have merit as your, your primary goal um, I don't think the likes of uh, Elon Musk uh, with SpaceX is doing would be doing so well if he decided to employ on diversity. I'm sure in the case like that, it is very much merit-based and he's, uh, he's reaping the benefits. Uh, probably the same with Steve uh, um, Bezos, you know, that he would, um, he would also, with Amazon, be employing on the basis of merit as opposed to uh, diversity. 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that that is the case. And I think any any company that wishes to survive is going to need to do that. And universities who wish to attract the best of uh, students who want to look very carefully at the way they uh, they prescribe these things. If they start to be seen to just basically filling quotas at the expense of the best person for the job, I think they're in for uh, a long-term decline if they do that. So Australia, we've you know we we don't have great political leaders. Um, the only person I would say that really can, inspires me because he just he speaks a lot of common sense, and that's Mark Latham. Um, and he, I don't know if he's changed that much, but certainly the Labor Party that he used to be the head of has changed radically to, and gone to the left. Um, whereas Mark Latham is very pragmatic, a very um, old school Labor working class Western suburb Sydney guy. And um, a lot of this PC stuff, him and his elk, they hate. And he very very clearly articulates um, against that. And, and I, I love the way he speaks. And I, uh, I think he would, he's the possibility for the future. Uh, he may stand as a candidate um, under the Libertarian banner, uh, the Australian... Um, what do they call? I got trying to think what the actual the, the David Lineholm party anyway. Uh, I'll I'll put the their, their title up on screen. Uh, Liberal Democrats, I think they're called. Yeah, <coughs> they're just names, but they're basically a libertarian party. That's the bottom line. And I think uh, if he if uh, if that party can put up uh, candidates of the quality of, of Mark Latham, then uh, I think. Uh, uh, Pauline Hanson's days may well be numbered because she's not really she's made it, she's stumbled a few times of recent uh, times I mean I still I think there's some good policies in that party but I don't agree with everything they say that's for sure and uh, I think I'll be much closer to that libertarian um, ideal that uh, that that line home and um, and Mark Latham are pushing that that seems much closer to what, what I'll be looking for um, and I'm just totally disgusted by the main parties and, and uh, that, that includes Liberals, Labor and Greens. They're all bloody useless in my opinion. They don't listen to the general public, they listen to sectional groups. The uh, Liberal Party is hopelessly compromised uh, with uh, branch stacking and the like and uh, it's not a democratic party. And Malcolm Turnbull, I don't like the man on a, uh, a personal level, not that I've met him, but just what I've heard about him and his style. And I don't, I certainly don't like his policies. I think he's, he's, uh, he's pretty well a green liberal. He's, um, he's not really a conservative at all. Uh, I mean, he had to, he's, he's eventually uh, acknowledged that, say, there are Sudanese gang problems in Melbourne, but... He's been dragged towards that position by the fact that he knows he's in trouble politically. That the, 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 the next election he could well be uh, mincemeat, and God help us, we'll have Bill Shorten, another an absolute dud, a man with a, un, a union hack, um, who uh, who really just doesn't have any credibility in my eyes at all. I, I both of these leaders are just useless. And then you've got Dina Telly. Now he's another another drop kick in my opinion. We've got, we've got three of the, the the weakest politicians in leading the main parties. So what I would ask people to do, I'd urge you to basically look at alternate to the main parties. That that's it's a plea to do that because the the Liberals, Labor, and Greens just don't deserve your vote. They really don't. Not in my opinion. Um, we need a, a party that's that's pragmatic and rational, one that will provide us provide people with reasonable cost of electricity as opposed to the ridiculous um, haste that they're adapting to uh, to renewables. Renewables are the future. There's no doubt about it. But why do we have to throw the bar the baby out with the bathwater? Coal at the moment is the cheapest option. Now that will presumably change over time especially if battery technology improves so that uh, renewables can be can provide more base load power then that'll be a different situation but they're not doing that now and we might we may have even be able to have a bit more hydro power which is proven 
uh, by simply building uh, dams up in northern Australia and harvesting all the rain that we're getting. And it's just absurd that that's just basically run out into the sea. And then when we have the next drought, they'll be kicking and screaming and saying, where's our water? Well, we could have had it if we'd built bloody dams. And like I said, they may have also been able to generate electricity if, uh, if they were high enough and, uh, and you know, the turb- if you could put in turbines to, to produce you know, cheap renewable power. So it's a win-win. It's just insanity that we're not building dams. It's just craziness, and it's a craziness that we're not building more coal-fired power stations until a time comes when when they're not needed. But right now, we're going to need them for, for probably a couple of decades at least until other technologies can take over. And that'll be great when that happens, but why should we make Australians suffer with prohibitively high electricity prices in in the meantime. It just doesn't make sense. And it just pisses me off so much that our politicians are so out of touch. They're so much in a bubble. If I had my way, I would just basically scrap the whole concept of Canberra, of having politicians go to this this artificial city. Um, I don't think that model's good. I, I think the old style where they used to <coughs> rot- rotate between Melbourne and Sydney was actually a better model because they'd get to rub shoulders with real people more often. Um, to me, that was a good system. So yeah, I'm, I'm not happy with the way Australia's going. I don't, it's, if anything, as Europe seems to be reforming and, and, um, and doing the right thing by their people, h- here we could end up with a shortened Labor government which is going to just increase the debt even further and probably open the borders, that's the other problem. So we, we, you know, the, the, we'll have that refugee issue we, once again. It's going to be a disaster. Uh, but it's looking like that is our future. So I'm quite bleak about it. I really am. I, I, I'm sad. So I'm generally an optimist, but as far as the future of this country is concerned, is, uh, I'm not so, so um, ebullient about that. Uh, Sorry to be negative, but that's how I see it. Uh, I, I feel in, uh, powerless to change this situation. Uh, very grateful for, for being on YouTube. Not that YouTube's very friendly to independents either. YouTube have actually decided to kick in $25 million to support the mainstream media players, which disgusts me. Um, I just think that they've got it all wrong and um, another platform that will also host videos may well eventually take over from YouTube. But right now, YouTube, in effect, is a monopoly, so nothing can be done there. So, you know, press freedom's another thing, and, and basically, you know, YouTube is such an important conduit for uh, free speech these days. Uh, we, we need it, but I don't trust the people running it, to be honest. So, yeah, it's, it's a tough world we're living in right now. I'm very privileged to be in Australia. It's one of the best countries in the world to live in. I'm very glad I got away from Melbourne to to Cairns. I've, I've, I've enjoyed the move and it's fantastic. And my quality of life is better than a lot of people, I would think. But still, I'd like the whole country to be doing better. And I don't think it's going to for some time, unfortunately. So sorry to be a bit pessimistic here, but very thank you very much for subscribing, all you people. And even though it's only 300, uh, they're my 300, and I'm very proud that uh, to say that you have actually bumped me over the top of that. Uh, I'm never going to make this into a particularly hugely popular site, but a uh, channel. But it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I'm just being honest with what I say, and and hopefully some other people agree with what I've, I've got to, to put forward and and give you a little bit of a, an insight into my travels and what have you, and um, and my short experience with trike owning. <laughs> So uh, have a great weekend, and um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do this again in the future with an even bigger subscriber number, but uh, I'm not holding my breath. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give do that or give me a thumbs up, or, or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great. Uh, but uh, please don't ignore me. That's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored.